Hello, my name is Christopher Vinny Hodges. Uh, I am a grateful recovering addict. Uh, my, my story starts uh, four years ago in recovery. And uh, I, I, I told my, my story on the addiction series here with Shane Reinhart. And uh, I had some troubles, you know. Um, I had a relapse. Um, I wasn't working a vigorous program. I wasn't working an honest uh, program. And what that means is, is I wasn't being honest with myself and to others. You know, uh, life, life got really good for a while uh, in, in recovery. And I, uh, I lost that sense of where I came from and, and what brought me to a new way of life. And, and I'd forgot about the dereliction and the pain and the losses and all that stuff because God had been so good to me. Um, excuse me. I believe that my relapse, uh, was meant to be, I wouldn't change any of it. Um, it's brought me to the person that I am today. Uh, and if anything, it's, it's brought me to be a more honest person with myself, God, and, and the others around me. Um, so I just want to share a little bit of what happened and, and where I am now. Um, so I had some surgeries in my mouth. I was taking pain medications. Uh, and uh, after the, the pain medications had ended and the surgeries and the doctors were finished, I still had a need and a hunger and a want for, for an edge, for, for something to help me feel better. And uh, I reached out to another doctor and lied and manipulated and got on to uh, Suboxone, a maintenance drug, which I had no business being on. After a while of uh, being on that, uh, on that medication, I, uh, I started feeling really guilty uh, inside the rooms of the 12-step uh, program that I work and uh, I went to someone and for the first time outside of my uh, my personal intimate relationship I told somebody that I was uh, using Suboxone and I wanted to get off. Uh, it was a painful experience getting off of it. I didn't do it on the first try or the second try or the third try or the fourth try. Um, and as I would sit in the rooms of my 12-step program, I started feeling extremely guilty about the life that I was living, that I wasn't honestly clean and, and, and being honest with God, myself, and others. So I decided to, uh, the turmoil and the pain got so bad inside, mentally and emotionally, that I made a decision to get a hotel room, uh, buy a bottle of booze, drink all of that, and then the next day, go into the 12-step recovery meeting and uh, confess my relapse. And I did that. <clears throat> However, that unleashed uh, a monster beast addiction and relapse. One is too many and a thousand is never enough is what we say, and I couldn't stop. It didn't start out on a daily usage. I felt the disease tricked me and told me that I'm not an addict or I'm not an alcoholic and that I could manage my using. So every now and then I would have a drink. Long story short, short I ended up a daily user of alcohol. Uh, and it wasn't like Alcohol was a huge drug of choice before, but it was socially acceptable and I could hide it well. I ended up uh, hurting and taking hostage some people that I love dearly. Uh, and I, I, I was engaged, I had a, a stepchildren and, uh, and her, and I brought all of them into active addiction and they got to experience the hurt and the pain uh, uh, of loving an active using addict and that was the first experience in my life that was the first experience in my life 
of dealing with the relationship, people I love, and how this addiction uh, affects other people around me so much. Um, I just didn't realize I had so much to learn in recovery. Like I really thought, uh, I, I, I really thought I had this. You know, one of the worst things to say is I got this right. So I brought them into this world, and uh, I, I, I ended up getting three charges uh, uh, fr from uh, a legal standpoint. I received two OVIs within 10 days and a criminal trespassing. The criminal trespassing was based on my obsession and my compulsion. Straight out, active addiction, I could not stop contacting someone who wanted to cut me off because I was unhealthy. So I faced these charges. Um, I spent a little bit of time in jail uh, because of uh, the OVIs and that didn't stop me. Um, it got to the point, like I said, I was a daily user uh, again, uh, completely mentally, emotionally and physically addicted. Um, bottom line is July 11th of 2018, I was desperate. I didn't know where to go, where to turn. I'd lost everything. I was homeless again. I was at a bridge in Hamilton, Ohio at a man-made dam, intoxicated to the point of a, uh, of a blackout. And as people saw that I was sitting on the edge, called uh, the fire department and police and, and sent me help. As those, uh, as the first responders got to me, I, I fell in or jumped in to the dam. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, I remember at that moment when the water hit my body, it kind of sobered me up enough that the first thought was, God, I don't want to die, and I don't want to die from this disease. And I was saved. I was put into a, uh, a mental hospital for a couple days. That wasn't enough. They transferred me uh, up north in the state of Ohio to another uh, hospital. I spent uh, six or seven days there detoxing. One thing I know is that I wanted recovery. I wanted to change my life. I had enough hurt and pain. That was it. I surrendered. I accepted the fact that I cannot use anything, including alcohol, and have anything positive come out of my life. So I reached out to a, uh, a treatment center in Cincinnati, Ohio. The treatment center is called Cat House. It's at 830 Ezard Charles Drive. And uh, got onto a list, I called them, I showed up uh, on a daily basis and within three days, I believe, uh, they allowed me to come in. They did a medical detox for me. And once I was detoxed, I hit the ground running for my recovery and my life. I wanted to live and I wanted to live without active addiction. So I uh, made the decision to go into a recovery house living after the program. I also did the aftercare for the first time and completed it successfully. I've become a mentor and I give back to the clients in that program just as previous clients that graduated and transitioned successfully did for me. I still do that to this day. I, uh, <clears throat> I moved into the sober living uh, home I stayed there 10 months. Um, I had my, my, my struggles up and down with depression. Uh, went through holidays alone and uh, things like that, but I did it without using. I joined what they called the no matter what club and I just don't drink. I just don't get high, no matter what my feelings and emotions are. Um, my relationship ended and was put on complete hold if there was any uh, any hope for reconciliation i had to learn how to put my recovery first uh, at least a year clean and uh, my personal 
uh, wants and hopes and wishes were to be at a certain point in my 12-step uh, work, you know, to, to be at a healthy place. I have a sponsor who I talk to about these things. I have a network of people again. Um, here's the thing. The most horrible pain mentally and emotionally I've ever experienced in my life was being in recovery and then relapsing and then coming back into the program of recovery and feeling guilt and shame and not enough. Felt like a loser. And the people around me that were other recovering addicts and alcoholics and, and family and friends supported me and loved me. They loved me back to the point where I could start loving myself again. And that's amazing. You know, uh, what I've learned through this relapse back to recovery is uh, I can never stop doing God's work. That's what he wants me to do. Um, it's one of the reasons I, I team up with Shane Reinhart with the addiction series to, 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 to give back, you know, uh, to have another ultimate weapon, another human being that will, uh, that will do God's work and help others, you know. Um, I'm employable again. Um, I, I, I'm back home with, uh, with my roommates, my friends that are my family. Uh, I have small conversations with, uh, with my stepdaughter who, uh, who I love very much. I've reached out to my youngest daughter who comes to find out that she suffers from a very similar uh, disease as me. And uh, we, we've talked and uh, I'm there trying to reconcile that relationship. And it's all because of, uh, of recovery and people loving and carrying me back to, to loving myself. Um, I'm grateful to be alive. I don't want to die from this disease. I want to grow old and help as many people that, that I possibly can. You know, uh, the people that have helped me are amazing people and have taught me that I can only keep this if I give it back. And so uh, I wanted to share my story of uh, recovery, relapse, back to recovery. It's been a hard two years. It's been a hard climb back. But with God, I've, uh, I've got one year clean and sober. Thank you.